I'm Dr. April Strom, and today what we're gonna look at is another example of the chain rule. In the last video I just did, we had an example of the chain rule where I kind of explained a little bit more about the actual rule itself. So this one's just a quick reminder. If you need a fuller explanation, maybe go back and watch that first video again. But here, just a reminder to mention here, when we're trying to find a derivative of a composition of functions, such as f composed of g of x, the process is first we need to take the derivative of the outside function, again, keeping the inside function intact, and then I will multiply that by the derivative of that inside function. So that's our process, always two parts that come out of a chain rule problem. So in this video, I'm gonna showcase this example. P of X is equal to the quantity X cubed plus X squared to the fifth power. So this is all a bunch of power rules here, and we actually have an inside function and an outside function. In this particular example, it's a little bit cleaner and easier to see what the inside function is because I have parentheses to kind of showcase that for me. So in the inside part, just to write myself a little note here, inside function will be the quantity inside those parentheses. So we have x cubed plus x squared. My outside function, it's important by the way to write these down just so you can visually see them. The outside function is the thing that I'm doing outside of those parentheses, and in here, I'm taking that quantity to the fifth power. So I have something like an x to the fifth. This isn't my actual function I have because I have a more complicated x on the inside there of those parentheses, but that quantity has been taken to the fifth. So here we go. We're going to start with our derivative, p prime of x, for this function, using the process of trying to find the derivative of that outside function first. So reminder, outside function is x to the fifth. I've got to use a power rule to be able to help me with that. And a reminder there, the power rule says, we're gonna take that power of five and bring it out front of this, this quantity, and then we'll decrease that power by one, so down to a four. So what I have here is a five that's out in front when I take the derivative of the outside function. I'm gonna skip writing the inside function for a moment, and I now have a new power of four there. That's just the power rule part. And again, a reminder, per the chain rule, when I take the derivative of the outside function, I need to keep the inside function as is. I literally here do not do anything with that inside function yet, okay? So I've taken the derivative of the outside function, keeping the inside function intact, but now I'm gonna multiply by the derivative of that inside function. So I will multiply by the derivative of that inside function, x cubed plus x squared, and then obviously I gotta take that derivative there. So I'm not done, and I'm a fan of always doing kind of one step at a time as I work through my problem. So I've got one more step to finish this derivative off. I've got p prime of x is equal to five times my x cubed plus x squared to the fourth power. Again, nothing changes, I just get to copy that down. Multiply by now my derivative of this inside function. Well, it turns out that inside function has two functions of its own, but luckily they're being added together. And so all I need to do is think about this x cubed, take its derivative, which is just a power rule in and of itself, and then add it to its derivative here of the second function, which is again, just another power rule there. So because though I have two parts, I need to make sure I put it in parentheses here. So I'm multiplying by that whole quantity. So I take the derivative of the first piece, which in this case is three X squared, add to it the derivative of that final piece, which is two X. And I can leave my equation just like that if I would like. No sense in multiplying out and distributing and all these things. It's best to leave it in factored form. And then that is then my derivative of P of X from what I started with. All right, thanks.